Hello and welcome to this Tyranid Showcase with me, Xenovids. Uh, what we're going to look at now is, uh, oh, there it is, sneak peek. Uh, we're going to have a look at my entire Tyranid collection bar 11 Termagants, which are over in the case. So I've got about 3,500 points worth of Tyranids. Um, ranging from all of the force organisations, lots, lots of heavies, lots of troops, lots of HQs, etc, etc. So, um, let's take a look. It is, in all its enormity. <laughs> We've got a, a lot of Tyranids. I do like Tyranids. Um, I think they're one of my favourites, if not my favourite, 40k army. There's just something unique about them. They're the alien race. Uh, the bugs. Let's take a little closer look at these. So, 30 Termagants. And you need lots of these in your army. Gaunts are extremely cheap now and enables you to swarm an army. And if you have 30 Termagants, you can unlock Termagon from the heavy support, uh, their HQ section to the troop section, giving you a monstrous creature in your troop slot. Now with the new 6th edition codex, you are able to take monstrous creatures in all force organisation slots, which is something brand new. Got three lonely rippers. I, didn't, I don't really like the rippers, I think they're a bit too expensive for what they can do. When you compare them to Necron Scarabs, which are cheaper, and can take down armor saves and vehicle hold points and armor values and stuff like that. Then we've got 30 Hormagons. I've always liked Hormagons. I see people criticize them a lot, but if you just think 30 of these running at you, they move six inches, they then run, and they add three inches to their run roll. And if you don't like their run roll, you can re-roll it, because they have fleet. And two attacks standard, and there is a chance, if they get rage, if they're out of synapse with their instinctive behaviour, and they charge, and you've given them the special ability so that they have poison, you have <laughs> um, them rolling to hit, four attacks, and with poison, they roll on fours, instead of fives like normal. Which is quite devastating. So, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gene stealers. Eight gene stealers! What do I think about gene stealers? The models are great! The fluff are great! The actual in game play, horrendous! Low armor save. They can dish lots and lots of damage out, but you can be shot by, with a slingshot, for crying out loud, and they'll die. So Gene Stealer's not for me. Free Hive Guard. They've got great weapons, although they're now Ballistic Skill 3 when they were a 4. And the best buff of the entire Codex, the Venom Throat, which gives everything within 6 inches shrouded. So, if that unit is within 6 inches, the whole unit gets shrouded. So you can have a giant bubble of cover which is much needed in this codex. You shouldn't be relying hugely on armor saves, you should be relying on cover saves and other models getting in your way. I've got three zone throats. This one was my conversion for the Doom of Malantai. I added a helmet piece from a Morlock onto him, just to kind of make him look a bit cooler. But now there's no more Doom of Malantai for now. Due to the Chapter House Games Workshop, Malarkey legal battle. Coming back over this way, I've got three warriors just kitted out with devourers and scything talons. Um, I know I do like the new kit where you can make a prime, and I've seen a lot of battle reports um, on mini wargaming where they've taken a full squad of nine, given them bone swords as well, and bone swords with are brilliant because I'm pretty sure if you have a warrior squad with a Tyranid Prime, he gets their ballistic skill, maybe weapon skill as well. But bone swords, AP free weapons, and on sixes instant death. So that's pretty cool. 
Then I do have some gargoyles that need much love, but I do also have 30 of them. 30 amazing gargoyles. These are pretty awesome, cheap, 12 inch movement. And they will do a few pot shots, but really great for just forming a line of cover. If you have these bad boys at the front, moving up with a venom throat near your army, your opponent will shoot into your army. Any models behind it will get a five up because you have your models in the way. And then shrouded, plus two to that. So you could have gaunts with three up cover saves, which if you've seen my last battle report, space walls and tyranids, that's devastating. In the middle here, I have my Swarm Lord. He is metal, he's from the past, back in the day where Games Workshop had metal models. Um, he just looks awesome. I don't usually like the swords, but this guy is pretty cool. Uh, he did go up in points. I never used him because of it. I thought he was going to continue to be awesome. Um, for his points, I don't know if he's worth it, because you have if you're walking a tyrant, you have to have him with a bodyguard, and no, I don't have any tyrant guard. Um, <clears throat> and I don't want to go out and spend the points and the money for that, where I could have two wing tie tyrants. So uh, let's have a look at the wing tie tyrants then. One of them I have converted. I don't really like the look of devourers on. Uh, monstrous creatures, and I have seen in White Dwarf and pictures you can buy Devourers Games Workshop are making them specifically for the monstrous creatures, and I just think they look really too stubby and small. So what I've got here is two of the arm pieces from the Tyrannifex kit, and put them on his arms, and it looks more baggy, so he looks like a giant praying mantis, which fits in with the bugs theme, um, and looks a lot cooler. Um, I think Games Workshop also did one like this afterwards. And the other one that I've got, uh, I've just got Lash Whip and Bone Sword on him. But I also kiss him out with Twin Link Devourers, Brain Leech Worms. Two sets of them because they are awesome. I've got five Spore Mines and a Biovore. He is a lot of fun to play with, but that's really it. He, he's, you can, I think, 40 points, you've got a Barrage shooting. AP4, awesome. And Spore Mines aren't as bad as they used to be, which is good. Free Khan effects is then. The, I've got them with Bone uh, Crushing Claw and Scything Talons. I think they look better as raw creatures of doom and smashy, smashy, but they are all in my list. Two sets of Twin Link Devourers with Brain Each Worms, giving them. 36 shots, which are twin linked, and then their strength 6. So it's going to be doing a lot of damage to light vehicles, infantry, and terminators. It's just mass amount of shots, which is devastating. Then I have two Turvagons. Turvagons have got the biggest nerf, in my opinion, and a lot of people out there on YouTube and Tyranid players. Basically, their points went up. And that's, that's it, they're, they're the range of, if they die, and any termagants within, used to be 6 inches, would blow up. Within, it's now within 12 inches. However, they do have, there are level 1 Psyker, you give them Dominion, then their Psychic um, range goes from 12 inches to 18 inches, so it kind of stops that nerf, but again, it's too expensive, and it's in the heat. HQ slot still. You have to buy 30 Termagants to make them a troop. But that's what I do. I used to take two, I now take one just so I have a monstrous creature able to hold objectives or if it's kill points, move up and spawn some gaunts and just overwhelm. I'm going to go over here to my Tyranifex. Another good model, one of the biggest. Good looking model, I've got him with a rupture cannon, but I would probably field him with the hive node thingy, I think I'm saying it right. 20 shots essentially, just mass firepower again, because the Tyranids, although I prefer them to stay how they are, just mass swarms, 
and num 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 num. They're now daka 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 daka. The ability to have twin link devourer brain leech worms in a lot of monstrous creatures. You've got mixture of guns you can have on the termagants and warriors and such and such. They're very very shooty and I guess you kind of need to weaken your opponent with shooting first before you finish them off with your giant jaws. Uh, Terran effects, good. It went down in points by loads, but I don't use him anymore. There's not a space for him in my list. Exocrine, I was going to make him a horror specs and have an elite choice, but after thinking about it, a five wound monstrous creature that just kind of walks up the field by himself, having to move and run, move and run, without aiming to shoot anything decent. I just didn't think he would work out. Good looking model though, so I, uh, instead of that I made the Exocrine, which again, great looking model. He is a biovore on steroids, and has a strength 7 AP2 gun, which can fire six shots, or a large blast, depending on how you feel. So that is brilliant. A monstrous creature that can move up, and do plasma doom. <clears throat> Great addition, much needed, high strength, low AP firepower. And then to finish it off, I have uh, these two bad boys, a Trigon Prime and a Morlock. Although I do use them both as a Morlock, but I will. can also use them as Trigon Primes or Trigons because I don't want to go and buy lots more. These are great models, Morlocks are fun, 140 points I think it is, and they can possibly come up and destroy you from below. Trigon Primes never s mishap unless they go off the table, so they come in like a drop pod essentially, and then you have it there, this awesome Synapse monstrous creature of doom, which has I think about 7 attacks on the charge, um, which is taking down anything. I mean this on the charge with smash and could take down any vehicle really. Possibly even an Imperial Knight Titan. But yeah, that is, I just come out of it. 3,500 points of Tyranids. This is the showcase for my favoritest army. I started collecting Tyranids properly in 2010. I think that was when the fifth edition codex came out for the Tyranids. Yeah, that's when I started doing it properly, um, and then when 6th edition hit, they were definitely my main army. I have been having a lot of fun, and in our 40k league, uh, we've done it so each of us have three armies. So there's two of us, we each have three armies, we play all the armies together, against each other, and then if it's two of my armies together, my opponent gets to play as one of my armies as well, so he's had the chance to play as Tyranids and he's enjoyed uh, playing them. The only thing he doesn't like is moving every single gaunt so far and I have about, on starting, I have 60 gaunts on the table and then Turvagons can spawn more. He doesn't like that aspect of it, but he does love the way they look, which I agree with obviously. Um, the colour scheme I went for, I was researching colour schemes because I was going to do High Fleet Behemoth, the red and dark blue, because I think it looks amazing. But then I saw um, this, this, this kind of colour scheme, and it's taken from, there's a crustacean a crab, I think, maybe in the Mediterranean or somewhere, which has a kind of, well, if you have well, it looks like this colour, which essentially is Agrax Earthshade on white. And then its shell was a bluey shell. And I thought it was really interesting, and I didn't want to make just white with blue, because I wanted a snow theme. And I think they, they look pretty good. So, tell me what you think of my army. What do you think I should purchase next for my Tyranids? Whether it be Tyrant Guard, or more warriors, for example, or the horror specs I was talking about earlier. Uh, tell me what you think my collection needs, and if there's anything missing that you found in your battle reports that have been amazing, you let me know. If you've got any gems, whether it's something amazing that I've missed, like a harpy, 
or some of the flying monstrous creatures from the fast attack section. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I've been Xenovids, these are my Tyranids. Uh, please subscribe, like, comment and share my videos. It really means a lot to me and uh, I will see you on the next video.